Yes. It's still. But you can't be any geek off the street. You gotta be handy with the steel if you know what I mean. Her. Keeping it real. channel my name is Steven and this is Steel keeping it real so you know what today is it's Friday Friday gotta get down on Friday that's right it is Friday it's female Friday and on this day I like to showcase female artists past present and future on the channel now this particular person I have done before but you guys have never seen it because it always gets blocked. And I finally found a version of it not being blocked. If I actually showed you the video that I actually did a long time ago, that's when I had hair down to my chinny chin chin. Remember that? Some of you don't because you've never been on the channel before. And if you haven't, welcome. Um, so I've always liked this song and I was like, I'm going to do it one way or another even if I have to go. But the, the inconvenient way and have to pause the video each and every time. But I don't have to. I like letting the music play out. I like talking about it beforehand and afterwards. Um, it just seems to be how I like things. I know I'm going to have to conform sooner or later, but it's not later. So here we go. Now, uh, the song that I'm going to do is A Lot of Love by Nicolette Larson. Now, this song came out in 1978, and it has a little bit of a history when I looked it up, uh, something I might not have known last time. So, um, this is a song that was actually written by Neil Young, and he first released it on his 1978 album, uh, Comes a Time. Uh, a Lot of Love was then covered by Nicolette Larson that same year. Larson's version reached number 8 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 8 on the Cashbox Top 100 in February of 1979. It also, also hit number 1 on the Easy Listening charts and was a hit in Australia, number 11, and New Zealand, number 12. But what makes this even more of a story about that, that's, uh, you know, that I wanted to say, um, Linda Ronstadt, who has sung back up for Neil Young with Larson, has stated that, that it was her suggestion that Larson record a lot of love and that Larson producer thanked Ronstadt for having a top of the line. Thank Ronstadt by having a top of the line sound system installed in a Mercedes convertible. However, Larson's own recollection was that the suggestion that the suggestion she recorded Lot of Love originated with Neil Young, with whom she had formed a personal relationship with while backing him vocally back in the day. Uh, the publishers of Neil Young Neil Young uh, News quoted Larson as saying, I got the song off a tape I found lying on Neil's floor of Neil's car. I popped in the tape and played and commented on what a great song it was. And Neil said, you want it? It's yours. So that's kind of cool. If that, you know, that is uh, the actual story. And you know what? It's 2022. Let's just say it is the story and leave it at that. It's a cool story. I love the old story back in the day. I'm like, you know what? Our most famous song I hate, and you know what, um, somebody said we need another song for the album, I went in another room, just jiggled down something, next thing you know, it was our biggest hit. And some of those I say like bullshit. I, I call bullshit on a lot of those, but it adds to the mythos of a particular song, but come on. You're, you're, you didn't, you went in there five minutes, everybody recorded it in one take, and it's like, Deuces? No, come on. We're not, you know, we're gullible. Human beings are gullible, but I'm not that gullible. I, every time I hear it, I go, bullshit. I call bullshit. Because by the time we're hearing this song and they're talking about it, as, as in back in the day, it's all passe to them. It's like, oh, you, yeah, you know, they've, cre they've created it. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, 
If you like videos like this and others on my channel, please don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification button, because I'm doing at least 15 videos each and every week. So this also, you know, you're talking 1978, we're talking disco, and this song has more of a jazz sound to it. it you know, her voice is so smooth and silky, and then you have a lot of horns and things like that going into it, that this song sounds more of a jazz than, than anything. And, you know, I've also talked about how certain songs, once they come out, they sound like they go straight to the adult contemporary, which this became number one on the adult contemporary, because it just has that kind of sound. Uh, you'll hear what I mean if you've never heard the song. So without any further ado, here is Nicolette Larson, and a lot of love. And here we go.
so that is lot of love by Nicolette Larson and you can hear maybe some of the um, disco influences coming through that song um, because there are you know the way the strings come in there um, you know, and you can hear them very prominently, definitely in the headphones. But even when you heard it on the radio, you could hear those strings. I'm not saying, you know, 70s was known for strings, you know, because you hear it in the 60s, you hear it in the 50s, and you hear it in the 80s. Everybody used orchestration one way or another. But when in the 70s, that's when this phenomenon came to be known as Yacht Rock happened. You had a lot of these songs that had all this orchestration on it that were into normal pop songs and um, it, it, it kind of changed how they were viewed. This is definitely easy listening. You know, as much as, you know, uh, you know, the lyrics are talking about, you know, it's going to take a lot of love to get to, get to where we are or, you know, to that you know, aspect. I can't remember the lyrics right at this time. I only know the lyrics that, that I was singing. But, you know, it was saying we, it, it, it's going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot uh, to get us through the night, to get, you know, to all these things. It's going to take a lot of love. It means it's going to take work. And you hear that, and really, there's nothing offensive about that. So that's why it's, it's easy. And plus, with the, with the saxophone and the flute, and you know everything else that's going on in there you know it just it's just easy on the ears it's really easy on the ears and that's one of those reasons why I wanted to do this song so much that you know 1978 I'm like nine years old um, and this song was all over the radio uh, we would have been 78 we would have been maybe on our way back from Alaska to New Mexico, so it would have been a song that we've always heard on the radio. And that would have been no matter where we were because it was one of those not offensive songs. It wasn't country, it wasn't rock and roll really. It's kind of like a combination between the two, but then it's jazzy or whatever. So, it, you know, driving from Alaska all the way down, it's going to be playing on a lot of radio stations that play pop music. It's not going to be like, oh, they're they're a, a particular color, so we're not going to play them when you pass through this belt. Which you know you get a lot passing passing through some of those areas, as well as maybe passing through the Bible Belt when you know all of a sudden all of your radios turn over and you got preachers preaching, and it's like, man, I hated driving through those states. I really, really did. Uh, but, you know, hearing songs like this during the disco era with the Bee Gees and, you know, you hear songs like Fly Robin Fly and Kung Fu Fighting and all this that was going on on regular pop radio. And pop radio wasn't so bad. But you think of pop radio now and it's like, ugh, everything sounds the same. And back in the day during disco, there you had people saying, you know, everything sounds the same. You had people, you know, saying like, I'm not going to play disco and have, you know, going to like Yankee Stadium or someplace like that and taking all their disco records and blowing them up or setting them on fire or whatever, which is just ridiculous, you know. Why would you destroy your own stuff, you know? If you don't like it, then just don't play it or sell it. You gotta destroy stuff. Some somebody, you know, LeBron goes to LA and you wanna burn his jersey? No, I think people were burning his jersey when he went to Miami. But either way, it's like, why? Are you that much of a hater? You know? The guy carried the team forever. He can't do it all. You know what? When it comes to LeBron and Cleveland, you know what? Y'all can't say nothing because he gave you a championship. So if you are still here, I thank you very much for staying tuned. I really do appreciate it. Boy, I can I can go off in a different direction just like that. Um, if you, uh, I thank you for, very much for staying tuned. I really do appreciate it. First and foremost, I do want you guys to like the videos as much as I like them for you. After that, all you need to do to help me out with the channel is to like, subscribe, share, and comment. 